So in this section, we are going to be looking at uh, some electrochemistry problems. Uh, we have a handout here that just as a set of uh, textbook questions that we'll go through. So question one says a voltaic cell is constructed. One electrode compartment consists of an aluminum strip placed in a solution of aluminum nitrate. The other has a nickel strip placed in a solution of nickel sulfate. The overall cell reaction is given. So question A is what is being what is being oxidized and what is being reduced. So we'll go through these um, in order. So we have two Al plus three nickel plus two two Al plus three plus three nickel solid, aqueous, aqueous, and solid. So what we look at right now is to determine what's being oxidized and what's being reduced. We have to do um, oxidation numbers. So first up is aluminum. Aluminum's oxidation number, because it's aluminum solid, as it would appear on the periodic table, is zero. We have metal ions that um, just have their charge as their oxidation number, and nickel metal again is zero. So aluminum is, aluminum is being oxidized, and nickel is being reduced. So A, nickel is being reduced, aluminum oxidized. Question B. Write the half reactions that occur in the two electrode compartments. <coughs> so we have aluminum being oxidized. We have nickel being reduced. And that's B. For question C, it asks what electrode is is be the anode and which is the cathode. So the anode is where um, oxidation takes place, and the cathode is where reduction takes place. So let's see. Indicate the signs of the electrodes. So the cathode is positively charged and the anode is negatively charged. That's D. For E, do electrons flow from the aluminum electrode to the nickel electrode or vice versa? And electrodes will always flow from where oxidation is taking place, the anode, to the uh, cathode. So it's always anode to cathode, or in other words, from the aluminum to the nickel. And then finally, in which directions do cations and anions migrate through solution? Assume the aluminum is not coated with an oxide. Um, the comment on the aluminum being set up as um, an oxide, which you can see here, is aluminum will um, naturally just form um, Al2O3, um, and it coats it, which is why aluminum generally doesn't rust, because it's already coated with an oxide. So for F, cations always move to the, the cathode, anions move to the anode, cathode and anode.
so we're going to look at question two here with um, palladium chloride plus cadmium going to palladium plus four moles of chloride ion plus cadmium plus two so the first thing we have to do is determine which of these um, ions are being oxidized and which are being reduced so we know that chloride is always minus one if it's not with an oxygen so we have minus one four times minus one is minus four the overall charge is minus two so palladium has got to be plus two cadmium is at zero palladium is at zero and chloride's at minus one and cadmium's at plus two so we see palladium going from plus two to zero it is being reduced we see cadmium going from zero to plus two it's being oxidized. So we write our half reaction PdCl4 minus 2 going to Pd plus Cl minus 4 two electrons on this side to make sure it's a reduction and we know that the, redu the standard reduction potential for this um, is not actually in our appendix E so we're gonna have to figure that out in a few minutes next up we have cadmium solid going to cadmium plus four sorry plus two plus two electrons and there's our oxidation we can look this one up in the uh, standard cell potentials and we see it as negative 0 0.403 volts. So for part A, we're just asked to write the um, half reactions. For part B, we're asked to find the missing um, cell potential or, or reduction potential. So we know that the cell potential is equal to the standard reduction potential at the cathode minus the standard reduction potential at the anode. So I know that the cell's potential is plus 1.03 volts. Um, reduction takes place at the cathode anode. Just fill in what we know. The standard reduction potential at the cathode must be equal to 0 0.63 volts. So 0 0.63 volts. And 0 0.63 minus minus 0 0.403 gives us our potential of 1.03 just as a check. Part C, we're being asked to draw the voltaic cell. So we write two beakers. We put our salt bridge in. Two beakers, we put our salt bridge in. We have potassium nitrate. We have our metals. So let's put a cadmium on this one and palladium on this one. We're going to connect them with a wire and a voltage meter. The cadmium metal is the anode, making this the cathode. Anode is negative, cathode is positive. This solution is going to have cadmium plus two this solution is going to have palladium chloride and chloride ions. The anions go towards the anode. The cations go towards the cathode. Potassium nitrate, we check to make sure 
we have the battery connected we know electron flow is going to be moving in this direction and that's how we draw our half cell so for question three it says given the following half reactions and we're given four of them and also given their standard reduction potentials it says write the cell reaction for the combination of these half cell reactions that leads to the largest positive cell EMF and calculate its value so what we're going to do is try on the ones that are the biggest difference so the gold bromide up here is at 0.858 and those are probably the two furthest we can get apart so it says write the write the half cell reaction so I'm just going to rewrite those two AUBR4 minus plus three electrons goes to AUS plus four BR minus and then IO minus plus H2O plus two electrons giving me I minus plus two OH negative now one of those is an oxidation and one of them is a reduction um, it needs to be sorry but we have them both written as reductions so what we're looking for is which of these is going to undergo reduction and for that we would pick the one that is the most positive so the one that's going to be the reduction is going to be the one with the biggest positive so this is reduction and this is oxidation so this means I need to rewrite this equation AU plus 4BR minus produces AUBR4 minus plus three electrons because now it's an actual oxidation let's ignore the one that's up top um, the electrons don't actually balance so I'm going to take these equations and mark and multiply them by three and two so three three six three six two eight two and six since cell potentials are intrinsic it doesn't really matter that we've done that uh, because the answer is going to be the same E cell is equal to the reduction potential at the cathode minus the reduction potential at the anode E cell is equal to the cathode so the cathode is where reduction takes place so the cathode is 0 0.49 minus, minus 0 0.858 equals 1.35 volts that's the biggest possible cell potential we can get so for question B it says write the cell reaction for the combination of the half cell reactions at least the smallest positive EMF so EU plus 2 going to EU plus 3 plus 1 electron that is negative 0 0.43 volts and then tin plus 2 plus 2 electrons going to tin so normally what we're doing here is we're just going to do a little bit of uh, just guessing based on what the numbers are um, we have two electrons so we're just going to multiply everything up here by two it doesn't change really anything and the tin half cell is 0 0.14 E cell is equal to the more positive of the two, negative 0 0.14 minus negative 0 0.43 equals 0 0.29 volts. And that's our answer for uh, number three. 
So what we're doing here in question four is we're trying to choose the strongest oxidizing agent. And what an oxidizing agent is, is an oxidizing agent is something that will be very good at becoming, in itself, becoming reduced. So we'll easily be reduced. So when we look at each of these pairs, we want to have the most positive reduction potential. So for A, we have to pick between iron or magnesium. For B, we pick between calcium or aluminum. For C, we pick between H2 gas, acidic, or H2S. And for D, we pick from H2O2 or O3. So we're going to take our little oxidation, our appendix E out. And the first one is we have to identify is between magnesium and iron. So we go down and we find iron. Iron solid is negative 0 0.44. And then we go over up and we find magnesium. And it's negative 2.37. We'll continue. We'll just We'll just write in all of our, va our variables in first. So calcium metal, negative 2.87. Aluminum metal, negative 1.66. H2, well, the H2 is the standard hydrogen electrode. We look up H2S. H2S is 0 0.141. We find peroxide is 1.776. And finally, we look up ozone. and it's 2.07. So we have them all done out. These are all voltages or standard reduction potentials. So an oxidizing agent will become easily reduced. So we want the most positive number. So iron, aluminum, And ozone. The more positive the value, the easier it will be to reduce. So picking between those two, we would essentially just be picking the one that is most easily going to become reduced or is a great oxidizing agent. So for number five, it says a voltaic cell a voltaic cell consists of a strip of cadmium metal in a solution of cadmium nitrate in one beaker and in another beaker a platinum electrode is immersed in NaCl solution with chlorine gas bubbled around the electrode. A salt bridge connects the two beakers. So it's, so it's, it's actually done a pretty good job at actually setting it up. So We have two half reactions to worry about here. First of all, we have cadmium. So cadmium plus two aqueous plus two electrons going to cadmium solid and a reduction potential equal to negative 0 0.403. So that takes care of cadmium nitrate and cadmium metal. What we have now is chlorine gas bubbling out. So Cl2 gas plus 2 and negative equals 2 chloride aqueous and a reduction potential there of 
five nine volts. So I have them both written as reductions at this point. So now that we have um, the half reactions written out, the one that is more positive will undergo reduction. So we know that the one that undergoes reduction will be the cathode, and that means the other one's going to be the anode. So for B it says, does the cadmium electrode gain or lose mass as the um, reaction proceeds. Well, cadmium is undergoing oxidation, which is not what this reaction is depicting. Um, it's just written as a standard reduction. But since it's undergoing oxidation, um, it's going from cadmium to cadmium plus two, plus two electrons. So that means it's physically losing mass as the metal um, oxidizes into cadmium and that enters the solution. For C, write the equation for the overall cell reaction. So we're just going we could just add those um, two reactions up. Of course we'd have to flip it and we would get chlorine gas plus cadmium solid goes to cadmium plus two plus two chloride ions, and these are aqueous. So we would just flip the first one and then add them, making sure that the electrons cancel each other out. We would always check to make sure the electrons are canceling out. What is the EMF generated by the cell under standard conditions? So under D, E standard cell is equal to the reduction potential of the cathode. 1.359. Take away the reduction potential of the anode. It's 1.762 volts. So that's question number five. So for this particular problem, we're going to calculate the standard EMF, calculate delta G, and then calculate the equilibrium constant for each expression. So each question has quite a bit of work assigned to it. For the first one, it says the aqueous iodide ion is oxidized to I2 by Hg2+. So, the only place to start is to look at the aqueous ion. So iodide ion is oxidized to I2, so to make the two work, plus two electrons. And that means that it's saying it's being done by Ag plus two. Well, that means that Ag plus two is going to be what is reduced. So Ag two plus two, plus two electrons equals two Hg just to make it work, the two and the two. So we look up the reduction potentials for these in appendix E is 0 0.536 volts, 0 0.789 volts. So we add these up the electrons will cancel, so 2i minus plus Hg2 plus 2 goes to I2 plus 2Hg. E cell is equal to the reduction potential at the cathode minus the reduction potential at the anode. So oxidation takes place at the anode, oxidation always takes place at the anode, so then reduction takes place at the cathode. So E cell is equal to the cathode, 0 0.789. Take away the anode, 0 0.536. 
and we get 0 0.253 volts. So there's our standard cell potential, there's our balanced equation, and the third thing is let's calculate our delta G. So delta G standard is equal to negative NFE cell standard. Remember that N is the number of electrons transferred, so we have two. So delta G is equal to negative two, nine, six, four, eight, five, two, zero point two, five, three volts. That equals negative 48,800 joules, equals negative 48.8 kilojoules of energy. So that's done. And the final part is we need to determine the uh, the uh, equilibrium expression. So k is equal to, to the negative delta g over rt ln k is equal to negative negative 48,800 joules over 8.314 times the temperature is which is 298 Kelvin equals 19.7 k is equal to e to the 19.7 it's equal to 3.61 times 10 to the 8 for our expression and that is part a so now we're going to do the exact same thing for 6b and it says 6b it says in acidic solution copper 1 ion is oxidized to copper 2 so copper 1 is oxidized to copper 2. That's one electron in the difference. So this is the anode. And it says by the nitrate ion. So NO3 minus 1. So what I do when I get stuck with um, not just a straightforward metal and a great little trick is to use your appendix E and just go down and find nitrate and there's the reduction of nitrate so I'm just going to use this one that appears right in my appendix E and that's usually a pretty good way to do that otherwise you have a lot more work to do so plus 4 H plus plus 3 electrons gives me nitrogen ga oxide gas plus H2O and this would be the cathode. So the cell potential for copper 1 to copper 2 is equal to 0 0.153. The cell potential for this one is 0 0.96 volts. So before we get too carried away, we should recognize that there are three electrons here and only one up top. So I'm going to multiply the top by 3 just so we have the right uh, number when we go to add these together. So then we add up 3 copper plus 1 aqueous plus nitrate aqueous plus 4 moles of H plus aqueous gives me 3 copper plus 2 aqueous plus nitrogen monoxide gas plus 2H2O liquid. So there's my overall reaction. E cell is equal to the standard cell potential of the cathode, 0 0.96 volts. Take away the anode, equals 0 0.81 volts. So we have our standard cell potential. Delta G is equal to negative NFE cell equals negative 2 sorry negative 3 n is equal to 3 
number of electrons transferred in the balanced equation. 96485 is Faraday's constant. 0 0.81 volts. Negative 2.3 times 10 to the 5 joules. So there's our free energy. We have a spontaneous reaction. Let's solve the uh, equilibrium constant now. Ln k is equal to negative delta g over rt is equal to negative negative 2.3 times 10 to the 5 over 8.314 times 298. And that's equal to 95. K equals E to the 95 equals 1.3 times 10 to the 41. It's about as forward of a reaction as we can get. So we have our delta G, our cell potential, our overall equation, and our reaction co constant. So for question 6C, we are um, looking at a basic solution. It says basic solution CrOH3 um, is oxidized to CrO4 minus 2 um, by ClO minus. So this one's a little bit uh, more tricky, but again, we, can, we should be able to look for um, these particular reactions um, on your appendix C sorry, E, um, and you can see that it is listed here, um, CROH and CRO4, and the second one we're looking for is CLO minus, which is up here. So, we kind of get a little bit of a help that way. So, CROH3 plus 5OH minus CrO4 2 minus plus 4H2O plus 3 electrons. So there's our oxidation and that means we need to have a reduction. And let's just copy that right from the appendix E. We have cell potentials it is equal to negative 0 0.13 volts is equal to plus 0 0.89 volts. I'm try and add these up, but the electrons aren't going to work. So I'm going to multiply everything on the top by 2 and everything in the bottom by 3. I get my overall reaction to be 2Cr. OH3 plus 3ClO minus plus 4OH goes to 2CrO42 plus 3Cl minus plus 5H2O. So just like we've done all along the way, you have two half reactions, make sure you can add them together so the electrons cancel, and we have our overall we now say that E cell is equal to the anode take away, sorry, the cathode take away the anode. Um, looking at these particular reactions, this is the reduction. So this is my cathode. This is oxidation. So this is my anode. So I have 0 0.89 take away minus 0 0.13. And that gives me 1.02 volts. Delta G is equal to negative N F E cell. That's equal to negative not the two, but we gotta use the six electrons. So three times two is six, or two times three is six, but it's gotta be the uh, balanced number of electrons transferred. Times nine six four eight five times one point zero two gives me five point nine one times ten to the five joules ln k is equal to negative delta g over r times 
times the temperature equals 238. Um, you're actually going to get an overload error in most calculators at this point. K is equal to E to the 238, which is equal to 3.3 times 10 to the 103. So very much favored towards the products. So there's our K, our G, which is negative, our E, and our overall equation. And that is how we do 6. Let's look at question 7. A voltaic cell uses the equation AL solid plus 3AG plus goes to AL plus 3 plus 3AG. Three G is kind of in a bad shape. So it says, what is the effect of the cell EMF on each of the following changes? So we have a couple little things to look at. First of all, let's bring up the Nernst equation. So non-standard cell potential is equal to standard cell potential minus 0 0.0592 over N log of Q. Where Q in this case um, is going to be equal to the concentration of aluminum plus 3 over the concentration of silver plus 1 cubed. Um, and just the silver here doesn't show up and the aluminum doesn't show up because they are solids. So for A, if water is added to the anode compartment diluting the solution so this would decrease the concentration of Al plus 3. So it would decrease the amount of this. Decreasing the amount of this would decrease Q. We decrease Q. It would actually because it's minus 0 0.0592, it should increase E. And just so we are clear, aluminum to aluminum 3 plus is oxidation. So that's my anode cell and my cathode cell. For B, the size of the aluminum electrode is increased. Well, these are all intrinsic properties, so no effect. The mass, increasing the mass doesn't actually matter. Not only that, um, you'll notice that solids don't appear in the Q if that wasn't clear enough. So for C, it says a solution of silver nitrate is added to the cathode compartment, increasing the quantity of Ag+, plus, but not changing its concentration. So once again, if Ag+, plus is not changing, then it's not going to affect Q, which won't affect this equation at all, so we'll see no effect at all. And for D, HCl is added to the silver nitrate solution, precipitating some of the silver as AgCl. So if I lower the concentration of AgCl, it will cause this part of the equation to become um, bigger, which will actually decrease the cell potential because as this gets bigger and we're subtracting it it will actually decrease the cell potential so let's look at number eight number eight says a voltaic cell uses the following reaction so number eight two fe plus three plus hydrogen gas goes to 2Fe plus 2 plus 2H plus aqueous. So we have 0 and plus 1. We have plus 2 and plus 3. So here's my oxidation. 
here's my reduction. We have the standard cell potential, so zero volts. Um, right off the bat before we even look at the question. So what is the EMF of this cell under standard conditions? So let's write our half reactions out. 2Fe Two Fe plus three plus one electron plus two electrons goes to two plus two. This is the cathode. This is zero point seven seven one. And then I have H2 going to 2H plus, plus 2 negative. This is the anode, and by definition is 0 volts. E cell is equal to cathode minus anode. 0 0.771 volts. So that's A. So for question B, we go up and we read number 8. It says, what is the EMF of this cell under these conditions? So we have partial pressure. We're just going to use it as it is. We'll assume there is little to no difference. And we have the concentration of um, all of this stuff. So let's go down and start working. So we're going to use the Nernst equation. We get it all filled out. And this is plus two. Just to double check. So we're just going to use partial pressure in here. Um, make our lives a lot easier. So we know that H plus is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 5. We get that from the pH. Moles per liter. The pH is equal to 5, so 5 pH is equal to 10 to the negative pH, so 10 to the negative 5. The number of electrons transferred is 2, so we're going to put that in for here. Let's calculate our new E cell now. E equals E standard, 0 0.771 minus 0 0.0592 over two electrons transferred this times the log of the concentration of H plus 1 times 10 to the negative 5 squared the concentration of iron 0 0.0010 squared over the concentration of so the partial pressure of hydrogen which is not squared, times 2.5 squared. E is equal to, when you work that all out, 1.266 volts. And that would be the non-standard conditions for this particular problem. So now we arrive at question number nine, the last question on this handout. And uh, this question really is interesting to even think about. It says, some years ago, a unique proposal was made to raise Titanic. Of course, that was the ocean liner that sank in 1912. The plan involved placing some pontoons within the ship using surface-controlled submarine-type vessel. The pontoons would contain cathodes and be filled with hydrogen gas from the hydrolysis of water. So the hydrolysis of water would be H2O liquid going to O2 gas plus 2 moles of H2 
two gas. Let's get that. So that's the hydrolysis of water. So we have negative two to zero plus one to zero. So we have the oxidizing and we have reduction. So let's write our half reaction. So first we'll write the oxidation. So the oxidation we're going to write H2O liquid goes to O2 plus 4H plus plus 4E minus. And you guys could find the uh, reduction potential for this. Um, in the back of your uh, book, Appendix E. Now we need to write the reduction, so we're going to write the SAG. I'm going to multiply this all by 2, so this becomes 4, 4, and 2, and the standard reduction potential is equal to 0 volts. So we have our overall, we have our half reactions. Um, this is oxidation, so this is the anode, and this is the cathode. E cell is equal to the cell potential at the cathode, 0 volts, minus the cell potential at the anode, 1.25 volts. This equals negative 1.25. That should be 3, not a 5. 1.23 volts. I'm having trouble reading my own writing. So that's the cell potential of this particular process. And that's a good thing that water doesn't spontaneously break into hydrogen and oxygen. So we need 1.23 volts. Right off the bat, we know that we aren't going to be able to do this um, easily. So we're looking for how many charges of how many um, coulombs of charge we're actually going to need for part A. So for part A, and I'm just going to leave this, this, this um, up here, this is just the start of the question, and it's kind of part of B as well. This is how many coulombs of charge would be needed. So the pontoons would contain film. It was estimated that it require 700 million. So 700 times 10 to the 6 million moles of hydrogen gas. So that would be this. And I'm going to need basically two electrons for every mole of, of hydrogen gas. And I need this in charge, so 96, 485 coulombs per mole. It's 1.35 times 10 to the 14 coulombs. It's going to be a lot of charge. So for part B, it says, what is the minimum voltage required um, if the pressure on Titanic is 300 atmospheres. So the total pressure in the a Titanic is 300 atmospheres. And that's going to have to equal the pressure of ox partial pressure of oxygen and the partial pressure of hydrogen gas. Now looking at the overall equation we come back up to it we're going to get two moles of hydrogen for every one mole of oxygen. So we get two to one ratio. So that means the partial pressure of hydrogen is going to be 200 atmospheres. The partial pressure of oxygen is going to equal 100 atmospheres. So now that we know that we have a 2 to 1 ratio, we know that we need to produce a pressure of 200 atmospheres 
um, at this depth. Now, going back to the overall equation, we have only hydrogen and oxygen. So the Q for this would be equal to the partial pressure of oxygen times the partial pressure of hydrogen squared over the partial pressure of, well, water's a liquid, so we're not going to include that. So we now have our Q. So let's use our Ernst equation. This non-standard cell potential is equal to the standard cell potential minus 0 0.0592 and I guess we're assuming that we're at 298 even at the bottom of the ocean. The num actual number of electrons transferred is 4 times the log of the partial pressure of oxygen which is 100 atmospheres times the partial pressure of hydrogen, which is 200 atmospheres squared. So E is equal to negative 1.23 minus 0 0.10. Non-standard will be negative 1.23. Point three three. So it's going to take negative one point three three volts to make this happen. So question C says, what is the minimum electrical energy required to raise titanic by electrolysis? So we need energy so the minimum energy required so what we look at here is the energy is equal to negative NFE looking at just just this potential to produce the number of moles of hydrogen we're gonna have to do some a little bit of creative work here so energy is equal to the negative um, we need the number of moles here, 7 times 10 to the 8 moles of hydrogen. Um, so I need that many electrons of hydrogen, but I need 2 electrons for each of them, times 1.33 volts, times 96485 joules per volt mole. And this is 2 times 10 to the 14 joules of energy required. So finally, for question D, it says, what is the minimum cost of electrical energy required for the necessary H2 if the electricity costs are 85 cents per kilowatt hour at the site? So let's put a price tag on this. So I need 2 times 10 to the 14 joules times 1 kilowatt hour is 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules. And this is just a conversion that we look up for kilowatt hours. So a kilowatt is um, 1,000 joules per second. Um, it's the watt is a measure of power. And uh, then, of course, we're talking about the addition of the hour as well, times 85 cents per kilowatt hour. So we're going to end up with 4.24 
times 10 to the 7. So that would be 4, 2, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So that's, I'm going to put some commas in here. $42.4 million in electricity alone based at that electrical rate just to produce this uh, ship to come up.